Denise, I, I was really struck by the name of the book, though. I let him go. I did. I let him go. Does that still go through your head after 25 yeah, it, years? Yeah, it does because I was the last one with him. Um, you know, and yeah, if, my mind is full, full of, you know, if only I stayed in that day, if only I just took the buggy, which I always did. I always took the buggy. I, it was always strapped in it. It was just that one day I didn't. And I didn't realise what a short period of time it was. You'd literally taken your purse out you know to pay what? for some pork It was chops. so, so quick. He come into the shop with me, he stood at the side of me, I had hold of his hands and I said to him, wait there, stay there. And as I t turned to get my bag and my purse to pay, I looked down and he'd gone. And I was like... And, like, the person that I was with, she was standing on the opposite side of the shop, so we shouted over to her, where's James? And she went, oh, we'll just be outside. And I'm going, we shouldn't be outside. So that's when I run out and, unfortunately, I took the wrong turn. What do you mean? Well, they were going one way as I went the other. So if I'd have gone the way that they went, I was got So you came out the shop and turned left, and they had turned right. In that yeah. mad so, panic moment. Yeah, yeah. Because there's only two ways you yeah, can go. Yeah, exactly. But and as I say, unfortunately, I went the wrong you way. You don't take responsibility for that, do you? It doesn't... I mean, I, I mean, if you still think about it, it must eat you up at night, but it wasn't something that was in you your hands. Mm. It doesn't eat me up anymore, you know, but I'm not torturing myself because it wouldn't be fair on the other three boys if I kept on thinking like that. Mm. Uh, I didn't want my feelings rubbed off on them because I mm. wanted them to have normal lives. I wanted them to, mm. to yeah. grow up, you know, and have the life that, you know, they should have had, uh, should have. So I didn't want to carry the burden on me all the time, but it's still locked inside me. Mm. It's still mm. there. How mm. do you feel when you see images of the two boys that murdered your son because in our eyes as well they're still boys obviously they're 35 years mm. old now mm. um obviously john venables has gone on to reoffend. Mm. um that must just be another knife in the heart the fact that they didn't get locked away for the rest no. of their life which is what any mother would would want how does that but make you, know you what? feel i never said you know they should be locked up forever i've never said that um what I wanted, I wanted them to come out of the young offenders and go into a proper prison. You mm. know, I wouldn't have had to fight the way at force if mm. that had have happened because they'd have done the time. And, yeah, obviously, they would have walked. Yeah. But because they'd done no proper sentence, I believe, and I strongly do believe this, that they were, they were rewarded for that crime. They, mm. they were never punished because they never hit an adult prison and they, ne they were never told, you know, what you've done, you will pay for it. You are going to go to prison. They were just given the best of everything. They spent eight years in the young offenders and then they were just supposedly rehabilitated and let go. Mm. Some, some people argue that obviously they were only little and, and they were 10 and that perhaps they had had a, a, a difficult upbringing that had led them to behave in the way that they behaved. What are your thoughts on that? No, they, they were... They were out to take a child that day. They tried to take a child two weeks before they took James. They tried to take a little girl before they took James. Um, fortunately for that mother, she caught them. Um, it was unfortunate for me that they, they, they planned it. They knew what they were going to do. Something that really, I think, played on all our hearts, didn't it, was when we read that you, when you saw that CCTV footage mm -hmm. with them that you almost felt Yeah, because you know relieved. what? You yeah. thought they were with other children. Yeah. with other children. Well... <sighs> When you're teaching your kids, you say to them, don't go near strange men. Don't, now it's don't go near strange women. Now it's don't go near strange kids. So mm. when, when I seen them with 10-year-olds, I said, you know what, they're, they're probably just playing with them. Mm. You know, they're probably just classing them as their brother because they want as a younger brother. Or, you know, not in my wildest dreams did I think for one minute that they were going to do what they've done. Mm. I don't think anyone in there in their right mind would have think that either. I don't think that's not normal mm. to look at that footage and think, no, oh, thank goodness. Mm. If it's a scene of being led off by, you know, a man or, you know, a woman, and then the, the doubts would have, mm. you know, these are being up there. But because it was two ten-year-olds, I thought, no, I'm definitely going to get him back. There's no way he's, he's going to be harmed by them. Yeah. Denise, how do you get on with yeah. a life after that kind of loss? Well, I didn't want James to be remembered as the major child. I wanted to do something positive. And James absolutely loved kids. So I decided to set up the charity. So I'm putting all my time and effort into that now. My boys are all grown up, so I can do that. And that's why I've done this book as well, because I've had the time to put into that. Um, you know, that Michael's 24, Leon is 18, and Thomas is 19. So they're not babies anymore. And they have got their own little lives. But... You know, I've had to, like, push myself into do stuff. I always give myself targets to like, reach, like, the, the charity. So we got the static caravan, now we're wanting a lodge. So I'm always giving myself a target to aim for and 
But the charity offers sort of respite care, if you like, yeah. for, for underprivileged children or children who've been through difficult yeah. times. Yeah. And have you managed to find joy in life? Yeah, do you know what? I, I'm so happy. I'm in a really happy place now with Maddie. It's, you know, Stuart is my rock. He's, he's always there and he's fought with me. He said, no matter what you want to do, I'm going to be by your side. You know, you know that. Um, seeing my lads grow up now, they are my world. You know, every parent idolises their kids. And I get that, but I really do idolise my kids. Did you ever um, think that you would find love again? Because no. you were so broken, understandably broken, after what had happened to you. Did you ever think that 25 years on you'd feel as no. happy as you are now with a, a, a man who's as wonderful mm. as your husband? Well, when James was taken, I just wanted to be with James. I didn't want to be here. Yeah. I just thought, you know what, this life is not, not worth living. If I can't be with him, I don't want to be here. Um, but then I found out that I was having Michael, and I'd, I think if I wasn't having Michael, I'd, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Michael gave me, you know, a new lease of life. He gave me yeah. something to carry on for. And I, I was a mum, but I never had my kids. Yeah. But with Michael, I, yeah. when Michael was born, I was a mum again.